Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and today we're going to get some eyes on some models that I've been wanting to show off for some time. So, if you guys notice a trend or a pattern with a lot of the 3D printed stuff I show on this channel, I like to take a look at things that usually kind of veer off the beaten path, not the usual fantasy tropes, or at least things that go a little bit against the grain and do things differently. And I gotta say, I've always loved that about Battle Yak miniature stuff, and I wanted to focus on one set in particular, and that was their, oh god, I can't remember the name, uh, Auton Advocators. That's what it was, because I had to write it down on a sticky note here to make sure I remembered. And I've actually painted a couple, and I wanted to show them off because it's just kind of different. And we'll start off with the paint one, I guess. So the Auton Advocators, if I remember the name correctly, were a bunch of clunky rivet covered mechanical robot guys with usually various big clunky steampunky backpacks but the thing is about these guys uh and and most of the battle yak stuff is they're so modular uh, you could really kind of take them in whatever direction you want do you want them to be like warforged close combat types do you want to have you know smooth angular space age robots like with a kind of 30s art deco style going on well both are possible with these so one of the nice things I've appreciated about Battle Yaks figures is oftentimes they come in both fully designed or completely modular. So if you want to have the totally modular bodies, that is an option. Yes, these need to be cleaned a little bit better, but that's okay. So once you've got those bodies, there's all sorts of fun bits and pieces to play around with. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be stuff dripping out or if that's just a leftover I don't know what it is it's a leftover support but I mean the thing I like about these bits and pieces is especially if you're into customizing and kit bashing outside of the 3d printing stuff these kinds of fun weird pieces for the backpacks I think offer up a lot of interesting options and varieties there's a ton of the backpacks you can always use more backpacks and then there were a handful of interesting looking close combat weapons. Some a bit more clunky than others. You can see here we have more of a power knife type weapon. I like the gear power mall. You can see my blisters that pop from having to hack trees for the last I don't know how many months. And there are actually a few ranged options. You can see here kind of very retro style ray gun blaster. Sadly, I wish there were a few more of the gun options, but you know what, that's just me being nitpicky, and I'm allowed to because it's my channel, so haha. -ha. But always something to consider, because I think having more of those types of options does open things up to both the sci-fi and fantasy players. Now, one of the other nice things is there's all sorts of funky add-on armor bits, so you can see, like, this guy's got these shoulder pads already done here. Those aren't on the basic bodies like we saw earlier here. And there are tons of head options as well, and that's another shoulder pad. A rather phallic shoulder pad. Oh, wait, this guy makes me think of Invader Zoom. And one of the nice things about these heads is they're all nicely scaled into their backpack. I'm sure you can come up with interesting options for those. I think this is another shoulder pad. I'm just grabbing bits that I have laying around from kit bashing and gluing together, guys. So again, some more sci-fi, more streamlined. It's another shoulder pad left over. Almost Necron-like. I painted these guys up like my Necrons. And funny thing too is they always have a pinup available. I don't remember what this one's name was. And funny enough, this one they actually... The pinups are always available fully clothed or unclothed if that gets your rocks off. I know some people like painting the, the nude models, but they had a nude uh, robot, which was kind of funny, with all the armored parts removed. Not that there were any naughty bits underneath, really, but... You can see she's a lot smoother and less clunky than her painted buddy here. A couple random examples of the armored up ones. This was when my printer was in need of getting fixed. So if you see ugly prints, always blame me. 
not the artists or the sculptors. Also keeping in mind that these are super zoomed in. You can see the blue tag stuck on my thumbnail there. Driving me nuts. Most of these, now I haven't altered the sizes yet, most of these you can see are going to fit on 25 millimeter bases. But then like this dude in the Gumby Run pose, I think is going, well I guess he could fit on one too, but he's overhanging a 30 millimeter base even. I'm afraid that little wire dongle is going to break. I will try my best not to. So just a fun little release, and it actually I thought ties in really well with one of the more recent sets, and those were the Ethernut Dive Drudges. And when I saw these guys, I was like, oh my god, we have to get these things printed. This is what happens when I actually clean the printer off and things come out a lot smoother. Look at these. Again, I like, there, there's no real set proxy or equivalent that I can think of in any tabletop games, and I'm all the more happy for it. I love when artists do something different and unique. Yeah, uh, dudes in boiler suits with all kinds of crazy wires and gauges strapped to them. I mean, yeah, it, it's pretty tropey, but how many other people model these things? I love the shock mall he's got, too. Uh, this one isn't actually wired into everything else. I had a couple of pancaked out wires on one of these, I don't remember which. And I was thinking to myself, you know what, it's almost like a, a Victorian steampunk ash waste nomad with all the junk just hanging off this guy. And these guys actually, I guess I got my wish because while there are close combat options available, there's also quite a few in the ranged options as well. So you can see like here I got a little bit of a pancaking flattening out. But man, those wires are going to be fun to paint. And just all the weird tubes. These are the single piece ones, but believe it or not, these are just as modular as the Auton Advocators. This started like this. Same thing here. There's all kinds of extra fun junk you can add to it. So in addition, they have all the hand-to-hand -hand stuff. They also have long weapons, which I thought was really cool. Some kind of a shock prod or something. These are just like perfect evil minions or, I mean, you could use them in all kinds of stuff. I think they'd work just as well in sci-fi games. I accidentally broke one. But I'm thinking, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a drill bit on there. A drill head. I'm sure I have drills. Maybe from like Mantic or something I can glue on there. Or I can just get some of the other modular parts from this set. In fact, there was a Big Daddy style guy that went along with these new Ethernut dive drudges, if I can get the name correctly labeled in my mouth there, uh, that actually did have some drill arms. And these guys, thankfully, actually have some two-handed options as well. So they got these fun little blasters. And funny enough, there was actually one of the models in this set, and for whatever reason, it was not scaled. So the stuff, usually from Battle Yak, tends to scale pretty large. Now, obviously, with 3D printing, you're more than able to tweak these things to your heart's desire. So you can see here, I mean, they're pretty large. But for whatever reason, one of the guys, girls, I don't know what gender. Maybe they're like the dude from uh, the BPRD. It's like just a, a spirit in a mining suit. But there are two-handed options for the weapons. So I was, or ranged weapons. I thought that was kind of nice to see. So he's going to be a lot more in scale with like War Games Atlantic stuff. So if you wanted to have him, or better yet, not just War Games Atlantic, but Stargrave models. So if you wanted to have a bit of a different vibe going on with your Stargrave, or your Planet 28, or your 5 Parsecs, or this is not a test, whatever your game may be, I think these guys in these full body suits are going to work out great too. And not to be outdone, we had a pinup model from the last one. There's also a pinup one of these drudges. Of course, if you want to do a totally unclothed one, she is still going to have the helmet. Or there's modular options as well. So do give Battle Yak stuff a look. We've shown their stuff off on this channel before. Lots of fun, interesting models. They're always fully modular. They are a little bit on the larger side, but if you're like me, <laughs> you're losing your eyesight slowly but surely over the years. 
uh, you know, that, that does have its advantages as well. But we'll have a link down below. You guys can take a look at that and hopefully find some stuff that is going to be fun to print and tinker with because I know that is something that I am thoroughly enjoying. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Say thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.